Special delivery. We got this awesome power jet in and we're just gonna unwrap this thing, check out what it's all about, and then we're gonna deliver it to my buddy's shop tomorrow. I'm super excited to use this thing because it's gonna have a ton of power. We're gonna get a very dirty truck, very clean, very quickly. So let's open this thing up and see what it's all about. But let's do it. Bring the camera, bring the camera. Uh, where do we want to start? What do you think, Kev? Oh, let's gut it. I almost feel like I'm stealing the honor of this away from its real owner. Is this wrong? It feels wrong. I can't hold back and I really do have to check it. I want to make sure everything's good, you know? I love the way PowerJet has been, they just do such a good job. So yeah, this is like kind of a different model power jet than, than uh, they usually do. Uh, the difference is they have these really cool casters on the back. Normally you would have like another set of these wheels right here and it would have kind of a shorter wheelbase and it would be very hard to turn. You'd kind of have to like make it do like a wheelie so you can like turn it. But with these casters, you can just coast around like nothing. Your garden hose inlet and then your high pressure hose outlet. Yeah, so these come winterized so you don't have to worry about them freezing you know but obviously once you uh put water in them you'll want to make sure that they don't they don't freeze that'll do some damage but yeah this looks really good i like that they use this unloader too because this is the same one that we build with the vrt3 it's a really reliable unloader and um super easy to change the pressure too on the fly so the more you tighten this the more pressure comes out so yeah you have your pump on and off so that turns on and off your motor and then you have your burner. So when you want to use that, you just have both of these on. But pretty cool setup. And this also has the auto start stop, which is important because um, when you release the trigger, this will sense it. it has these sensors right here and that'll keep the pump from overheating. It'll shut itself off. So that's a really big perk. It's going to super, super extend how long this pump lasts for. And this is also a general pump, which I've had a lot of good luck with for about 20 years now. I've worked on general pumps and these things hold up really, really good. They ship without the plug, just because everybody has different plugs, but this is a 220 volt setup. So this is gonna plug in where your welder plugs in or where your air compressor plugs in. Yeah. Can you ship these straight to uh, actual wash bays? Yeah, we, we actually got these all over the country. There's people in, uh, a lot of people in the Carolinas have been buying these from us. And then uh, out in the Midwest, we've had a bunch of different people. New Jersey is like picking up uh, steam with these. It's really cool. It's, I'm surprised how many of these things have been moving. I guess they're just a really, you know, they are a really good price and they're, you know, they're a good spec. And what I like about them is that they're easy to work on. You know, like you can, you can get at everything on this really easily. So I, I really like that, you know, and I think that, you know, they use good components, good quality names, you know, I think it's really cool. So I've been very happy with their performance. You know, they got a nice diesel burner and this is a 350,000 BTU burner. 350,000 BTUs. It looks like an afterburner when you run it without the coil on there, it's crazy. Now all we gotta do is get this thing off this pallet so we can get it onto the ground and roll it right into my van for tomorrow. We'll just bring it over to my buddy's shop, fire this thing up.
So we're ready to start using our stars and stripes. We're gonna mix these into the foamers. These are the new foaming agent that we're testing out right now, so I wanna see how it looks. So we're gonna mix these the same as we always have. We're gonna put in three parts water into the cannon. We're gonna put one quarter part soap over that. I already have these labeled, uh, you know, with a one and a two, so I know which one's which. There's a couple reasons why I like to put the water in first, because it helps, you know, you don't get any suds and it doesn't get out of control, uh, but it also helps weigh down these bottles a little bit. Um, so that, that's helpful just to keep them planted better. So I'm gonna fill these up to the 750 milliliter mark. There's a thousand milliliters in these bottles. Uh, MTM is releasing a new type of bottle for these soon too with a wider base, which would be nice. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna put exactly, exactly the right amount in there. It's not hypercritical how much uh, soap versus water is in there, but when I'm doing tests like this I, and I wanna see, I wanna try and judge how the foam looks and I wanna be somewhat accurate. But if you ended up putting it in there 50 50 or 10 to 1 or whatever, it's really up to you and what you're up against and what you're washing. You know, you just wanna stretch your soaps out as far as you can and still be happy. Stars we're gonna throw right in here. And I'm just gonna top this off to the thousand milliliter mark. But you can see how much more controllable that is than putting the soap in first. This thing would be gushing foam right now and suds out the top otherwise. And then we'll put our stripes in the second bottle. I would recommend doing this ahead of time too if you're gonna be doing this often. Like there's no reason to, to be mixing stuff like this on the fly. I would, I would probably just make a five gallon pail out of a gallon and then just pour it straight in if you're, if you're gonna roll this way. All right, we're ready. We gotta get their dirtiest truck over here. All right. We're ready, man. bottom to the top because I want to agitate the foam with the pressure. You just get a little bit better finish. That's it. That's why we do it. You can rinse top down if you want. Save a little bit of time if you want to do a good job. So come check this out, get real close, dude. So you can see the difference between these doors, age and whatnot, you know, condition of the paint. Obviously this is pretty rough. And a lot of this stuff, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to scrub that out. But on this side, a little bit newer door. When you wipe your finger across it, can you see real good right here, Kev? You don't wanna get any differences, you know what I mean? If at all possible, you want it to like, you want it to pass the finger test. I'd say this did pretty good, man. I'm pretty happy. I like the new foaming agent. How did it look to you, Kev? Was it a little foamier looking to you? Oh yeah. We're trying to get the foam profile to be as thick as we can possibly make it because it, it gives you more time to work with the product, you know? Lets you do bigger sections. 
and that's uh, that's helpful. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Well, we're gonna keep uh, keep working on stars and stripes, and we're gonna be uh, continuing to make some progress on the formula until it's ready to come out. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show what it's capable of, and you know, not just on you know the show trucks, but you know, just everyday uh, real life situations. Stars and stripes should be ready in uh, about hopefully within four weeks if uh, everything goes smoothly. We've got a few things we're trying to dial in before we release it. We're gonna have a pre-sale. We're gonna announce pretty soon. Stars and stripes coming soon. Check it out. Yeah.